Effective reading. You are about to read a novel. This novel is good in every way if the writer is done well and if the story appeals to you. You may find yourself encouraged after having read a novel, depressed after having read a novel. You may find yourself hopeful after having read a novel. But if you find yourself unaffected after having read a novel, either the writer has done a poor job of writing or you, the reader, have done a poor job of preparing for and focusing on the novel. It's also possible that you simply have no interest in the kind of story found in the novel. And if that's the case, it's time to choose a different novel long before you've completed the story. When reading a lengthy piece of work, the reader has three extremely important commitments to make. First, a commitment to time. Next, a commitment to focus, and lastly, a commitment to contemplation. Let me expound. A commitment to time means that I've determined that I am about to spend a specific amount of time in the book. This requires a consideration of schedules and responsibilities. For example, if I know that I start work at 7 a.m., and don't return home until 5 p.m., and that I have a responsibility to my family and won't have time to myself until 8 p.m., I'll do my reading between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. Okay, I've now committed to a specific time and a specific amount of time of reading, and now I'm determined to stick to that commitment. As a student, you have an altogether different schedule than I, more than likely. So you'll need to customize your personal commitment. A commitment to focus is all about determination. Let's face it, focusing on reading for long periods of time is not always easy. Sometimes I just don't feel like reading. But what I feel like is often not the best thing for me. So I find a place where I won't be easily distracted. For me, it's in my car or my backyard or my den. I do whatever it takes to place myself in an environment where I will not be distracted, a place where I can spend the one hour that I have committed to reading in full focus. As I read, I'll choose to think only about the words that form the sentences, that form the paragraphs, that form the chapters, that ultimately form the parts of the book that I am reading. A commitment to contemplation results in a more clear understanding of what it is that I just read. This is a bit more difficult, albeit a bit more crucial, than you might think. Contemplation is deep, reflective thought. Contemplation is you, after having finished the reading, for the time to which you committed, thinking not only about the elements, character, setting, plot, those types of things, but also about the deeper context of those elements. What do they mean to you? How do they apply to your life? How do they fit into today's world? These and many other possible questions could be what you spend time deeply reflecting upon. And it's during this contemplation that the mind begins to cement meaning. However, if the reader expects to ensure the realization of deeper meaning, they're now obligated to physically record these contemplative thoughts. And this is done through personal literary responses, informally through notebooks, and formally through personal response essays. For more information on personal literary responses, click on the link found at the bottom of this page. And thanks for listening. Happy reading.